Video assignment. Who needs paper? In school, a thesis deadline. A student rushes into the office. He arrives to see the professor. He quickly goes in front of the desk and he pulls out the thesis he's been working on. Obviously, today he will hand in a pile of paper. However, what will happen if there was no paper? Was the Chinese never invented paper back in the Western Han Dynasty around 120 A.D.? Well, if you're ancient Chinese or in Han Chinese sense, you will, you will probably use a bamboo strips for writing. They were stringed down and they were really heavy. If you are Egyptians, you will probably use papyrus paper made from the papyrus plant from the, near the Nile River. There are also other writing mediums such as stone and clay tablets. There is also parchment made from animal skins. However, are these options practical? If you choose a papyrus, you have to make sure you are buying it from Egypt as they are the only one who made it. If you choose to use a parchment, I hope you are rich or you have a sugar daddy because they are expensive. If you want to carve by hand, it is heavy and also easily breakable. If you want to hand in a fine essay on a bamboo strip, you will require about 9 kg worth of bamboo. So, before we can start discussing the impact of paper, we we'll probably need to first define the paper. In the past, people have used many things to record down information. From papyrus to sheepskin, to bamboo to rags, tablets, and even bones. But do we consider them to be paper? Historians agree that writing was first done on the tablet, then on the papyrus, which is later transitioned into the parchment. Later, Han China created the modern paper. For the sake of argument, we will define paper as a thin, artificial construct of the plant or animal fiber for the purpose of writing and recording. In such a context, we will not consider the tablet as a form of paper. We will include papyrus and parchment in our discussion, and we will end up with a focus on the advent of paper invented by Tai Lun and its effect on the greater society as a whole. Before we could talk about paper, we first need to examine the origin of writing. Without writing, paper and other writing media will have no purpose. Ever since the Sumerian who started cuneiform writing in the ancient time of 3500 BC, writing came from the need to record the massive trade and storage of goods. You see, Sumerians had large temples that also acted as a storage for the entire city, and they had to be large enough to hold food for the entire population. In the beginning, the storage record were carved using clay tokens. Yet people soon realized that they could carve the writing into clay tablets and drying it to keep it permanent. Funny enough, this kind of tablet tend to survive when the city burned because when it burned, the tablet was simply hardened for record. Yet this kind of paper was cumbersome. It was almost exclusively used by the temples for storage records. Yet, as Walter Ong mentioned, writing gave birth to the scribe class of society. You see, writing required a lifelong training in the language and the grammar. And it was a really expensive to train the scribe who could not do anything else besides writing. Thus, at that time, you had to pay a scribe to write a letter for you, the same way you would pay the stone craftsman to build you a house. As time went on, writing improved from the pictograph memory aid to a full flight language system. Yet, clay did have one contribution to today's language system. It forced many writing to write from left to right instead of going top to bottom. Imagine yourself drawing on a clay tablet. If you ever lost concentration for one second, you will likely smear the entire column of writing on the soft clay. Thus, if you write from side to side, such risks are reduced. The time was 3000 BC. Egypt began to use the local papyrus as a writing medium, and they found it to be a drastic improvement over traditional tablets. So their scribe began to use papyrus as a main writing medium in the empire. Since the making of papyrus was a complex process that involved cultivating the papyrus plant, extracting the stem and pounding it into thin strips, and lastly weaving it into paper, and drying it under the sun. This industry created a huge need for people to make the paper. The papyrus paper was so inflation and dominant that it remained the main type of writing material in Europe and Egypt until 800 AD, when the paper was introduced from the Abbasid Empire. The Egyptian pharaoh held a monopoly over the papyrus production and distribution. Many empires in the Mediterranean used the sea lanes to trade for this important commodity. This made Egypt a massive trading and production society, since papyrus were only grown in Egypt, and it needs the hot weather in Egypt to dry. 
Ancient empires such as Greek, Romans, and Carthage, Seleucid, and other states were very much dependent on the source of papyrus from Egypt as a main writing material. Most Greek manuscripts at that time were written on papyrus. The ability to pass information as messages has allowed communication and science to flourish as a result. Although it's still debatable whether papyrus was cheap by everyday standard, it was definitely better than writing on clay and stone tablet. Imagine carrying on tablets instead of scrolls of paper to write notes in class. The nature of papyrus being thin and bendable made it a great material for large scrolls. Yet around 2200 BC, there was a gradual rise of parchment being used as paper. Ironically, the rise of parchment is linked to the monopoly of papyrus by Egypt. No country likes to be dependent on another country for such an important commodity. Any problem arising in Egypt will almost be reflected in the lower export of papyrus. Suppose, if a pharaoh suddenly decides not to sell any papyrus to other Western Asian societies, how will we be able to write and calculate math? In 120 AD, the Chinese invented paper and changed everything. While the Egyptians were busy selling papyrus to various empires, the Chinese had not sat idle. Before papyrus and paper, the Chinese had been using bamboo as a medium. They invented ink to write onto the bamboo sheets called jian. Funnily, they seemed to have invented ink at the same time as the Egyptians. The jians were stringed together to make the wooden book called tse, but this made book very cumbersome, heavy, and easily damaged by bugs. In China, there was another form of early paper made from silk weavings. However, such method of writing was highly expensive and made writing impossible except for the emperor and the nobility. In 120 AD, a solution to an inexpensive writing material appeared. Cai Lun, a eunuch for the Han Emperor, was able to invent the process to make modern paper by mixing mulberry barks, fishing nets, hemp, and rags. Although there are debates whether he discovered paper, it was agreed that he formalized the process and paper began to gain popularity in China. The spread of paper had been gone through the Silk Road all the way to the West. Although the Chinese intended to keep paper production a secret, the Arabs were able to learn from the Buddhist monks who often traveled westward to a Samarkand. Although there is a popular myth of Chinese prisoners teaching paper production to the Arabs, this has been proven false by historians. The main spread of paper westward had been the Abbasid Empire, one of the largest Islamic empire to date. It spreads from modern-day Iraq to Morocco. The introduction of paper to the Arab world has created new movements such as commercialization of the reading books. We're talking about thousands upon thousands of books being printed with paper. And it was during this time that stories such as Thousand One Nights became printed. Gone with the expensive parchment as so many paper mills and industries were created in the ancient city of Baghdad. Although the Islamic Empire did not invent paper, they sure made it cheap and accessible for most people and spread all the way from Iraq to Spain. Paper and printing has been attributed to greatest religious teaching spreading in Christianity and Buddhism. Historians such as Johnson Bloom have been found that it was required for a Buddhist monk to know how to create and write with paper and ink. In fact, it was through Buddhism that paper found its way to Korea and Japan in 200 and 300 AD. Many religious communities of the 800 to 900 AD era were quickly to adopt paper as a cheaper way of copying scripture since copying parch with parchment was not economically favorable. A single book of Quran will cost 2,500 parchments of skin. That's a lot of dead sheep. In the Abbasid Empire, the rise of paper has also elevated the scribe to administrative positions. When you have an empire as large as the Abbasid Caliphate, there was a huge demand for bureaucracy. This led to the incre used, increased use of paper and, so, and, the, and the elevation of social position of scribes. Abbasid quickly changed its attitude toward writing from a religious secret to a necessity among government bureaucracies as the empire grew. Suddenly, scribes and secretaries were no longer just typing machines, they were advisors and administrators of realms. In 950 AD, another impact of paper was in the realm of mathematic breakthroughs. In fact, the Hindu Arabian method of paper arithmetic was invented then at the height of the Abbasid Empire. As often with new things, this was met with heavy resistance for ancient merchants and scholars who preferred doing mental math with the dust board. They used a method of mental math in addition. As you can see in the picture, each calculation will be erased in the subsequent step. 
This put a great strain on the mental mind and was prone to errors. With the invention of paper and the ability to write things down, arithmetic errors became a lot less frequent, and also became the arith arithmetic we know today. Lastly, paper has the profound effect of changing commerce as we know it. The banknotes we use today are also a Chinese invention from the Song Dynasty which coincide with the rise of popular paper in 8 AD. Gradually, paper currency were used to replace larger amounts of money because it was easier to carry around sticks of paper instead of heavy gold and silver coins. Around the 1300 AD, paper money concept was brought back to Europe in the idea of softaja, the letter of credit. But it will be another 400 years and during the price revolution before Europe has its first functional banknote a full millennia later than the Chinese. Yet the idea of subtajo has been in Europe much earlier than banknotes. And from this idea came the modern economics and banking practices. All this was made possible thanks to the inexpensive paper. <laughs>